What's going on guys? My name is Renegade. Today we're here for AKW q and We're here today with Corey and Ray. And so we'll just be answering the questions that I've gathered from my Discord server. As always, you guys can leave questions in my Discord server on my Twitter or in the comment section down below. So without any further ado, let's get into the first question. It's from Power of Mankind, and they asked, if you could only ever have one class, what would it be? And try not to pick classes like Blazebinder or like other OP classes. So Ray, you, you go with this one first. All right. So I'm trying to pick Blazebinder OP classes. So if I could only have one class, it would have to be a farming class possibly. So anything that's multi-target, I would take that over um, a soloing class purely because we seem to be farming every week in the new events. So anything that's a multi-target. Now, of course, we need that self-heal. And um, I think the stacking ability would be really cool to have on a class so you stack your first ability above your other abilities which are multi-targets um but there i don't really have a, a class like i haven't had time to reflect i don't know <laughs> i i didn't even read through the questions <laughs> i like how race i like a race like sounds like he has an answer and he's like <laughs> i'm trying oh, wait, i don't sorry <laughs> i'm just <laughs> Everything in my inventory I'm looking at is all OP. I'm just gonna say, I don't know. Like, I don't. Every class released in the past like like, only have four one years is OP. You'd have to go way back. And they buffed all the non OP ones to make them OP now. I think I'm the only one with an answer to this. Wait, you're gonna say a card clasher, right? Of course, <clears throat> of course. It's gotta be, <clears throat> it's gotta be card clasher. Can't wait till they restock that. It's not useful for anything. Like, it's kind of kind of garbage at soloing. And it definitely can't farm. But, like, it's the only fun class. I mean, it's the only class I use that I actually have fun using, so... It's gotta be Card Clasher. I'm gonna pick Abyssal Angel. That's just, um... That's my favorite class in the game right now, I think. I'm gonna actually answer a non-rare class. I'm gonna, like, answer with a class that people can obtain. Alright. <clears throat> uh, it's either gonna... Evolve Pumpkin Lord. Is it multi-target? It's been a while since I used it. Uh, Think so? So you going with Evolve Pumpkin Lord Ray? I'm going with Damien or oh. Damon. Oh, all right, yep. all right. Damon, Matt, okay. Matt Damien. Yep. It's multi-target. It's powerful, and you can get it in the game. It's not rare. You have to be a member, but yeah, I'll go with that. All I right. I, like it. I always use internal version of stuff for that. Our next question is coming from ZXC's fucking what the fuck? How did Mr. I even know slammed that? his head on his keyboard. Yeah, slammed the head keyboard, man. And uh, he asked, what's the hardest thing you've farmed for? Corey, what's, what's your hardest thing? <laughs> you know, when when I first started playing the game, I needed some gold. I wanted to get this 100k, 100k gold armor that's in Yolgar. I think it's still there. It looks like an Assassin's Creed armor. Hardest 10 minutes of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so you've never actually farmed oh. for anything? <laughs> Yeah, I've never actually farmed for anything. I'm, wow. I'm joking. Uh, maybe the... Uh, I've got three, I think, at this point of the... What are they called? Juggernaut items? So maybe those. But, you know, I'm probably going to go for something a little harder in the future, you know? All right. Not really gone for anything that hard, except for the three Juggernaut items, which is pretty easy compared to other things in the video game. Fair enough. Ray? The hardest thing I've ever farmed for... Is probably going to be Nolgath stuff. So anything related to Diamonds of Nolgath and everything. I spent a glorious two days farming and I got nowhere near my objectives. And that's using the ceremonial um, Void Knight Sword. And I had to go with it, the Tender the Assistant. And I don't have um, the Drudge and Pets and everything. I didn't pay 5k ACs for those, but still. Uh, most painful farm. I didn't even, I gave up on it, obviously. But everything else I farmed for in the game... Although it's been time consuming, yeah, the second thing that would be the hardest is Legion tokens back in the day when I had really bad uh, pets to farm them for. Uh, it took me so long just to get, for example, 3000 Legion tokens. So uh, it isn't a hard farm, it's just really boring, but definitely Nolgath items, hardest thing to farm in the game. I like to add in um, when you farm straight for something, like when you're going for a class, that like sitting there for eight hours straight just farming the same monster over that that'll kill you inside hmm. 
I've done that on a few occasions. It's not even hard to farm, it's just the time is what makes it hard. I'd rather have a fun farm and it'd be boss. really lengthy, but you know, there you go. That's that was that was farming for a uh, the non member voucher. I know when I was farming Void High Lord, like that was that was easily the hardest thing for me in the game, Void High Lord, but like farming the just the non member voucher, like it took so long for that thing to drop. I, I sat there for like I think it was like six hours and killing yeah, the you same did a daily monster. For HR, right? Yeah, yeah, you need to do a daily with that as well. But the fucking the, Damn. the non member voucher was actually the most awful thing. I used that uh that quest, I can't remember what it's called, but you, you farm for the Asterian helm from the uh tainted mm. guy at at Nogath and uh that that was yeah. ridiculous. RNG based, no? Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So I, I think I got RNG. like two non non M vouchers from the uh ceremonial. That was I got really lucky. Damn. Our next question is from Catalan, and they asked, "What top three classes, in your opinion, need a major nerf?" Ray, what what top three classes need a major nerf? All right. Well, looking at the classes I have in my inventory right now, um, you see, having classes that are all the classes that come out these days, they all follow the same pattern. There's nothing original. All the classes need a nerf. The classes need to go back to how they were back in the day. Now you get. I don't know. Again, I haven't really. All right, you go, Corey. I'm All right, so I don't think there's a single class that needs any huge nerfs, uh, except for uh, maybe a little bit of the PvP for VHL. It'd be nice if that was more of a competitive PvE class than just a click a button and destroy. I know it does have counters, but 90% uh, of the classes do not counter it. So um, what I would like to see is uh, stun timers reduced on every class that has a stun and healing being a lot lower on everything, especially on testing server where you're hitting like 2k HOTs and stuff like that on really easy low cooldown skills. So it's almost impossible to die in the game these days. So like reducing all the healing on every heal ability and the stuns would be really good on almost every class. Stuns and heals, all right. So you, you're going for like a PvP sort of perspective on this, whereas I'm thinking like just I don't have a PvP, so I'm going Blazebinder. That that's getting nerfed, and because uh, the, just the thing is with Blazebinder, it never misses on anything. So not only is it incredibly boring because every situation p pans out the same way, but you can just rely on it 100% to work the way you need it to, and I don't think that should be a thing with a class. Void High Lord, like you said, it's pretty pretty strong, not only in PvP, but like just soloing, it's, the DPS is just so much higher than anything else. Classes like Shadowstalker of Time kind of get close, but you have to work so much harder with Shadowstalker of Time, and it's a lot more difficult to use. Yeah, and then the third one, I think, honestly, maybe something like Stonecrusher, just because Stonecrusher can solo, it, it supports, it just does both of those things really, really well. And so I think I don't think a class should be able to do so much at such a high level. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I have two approaches to this. The first one being back in the day you had themes of your classes, right? I, I said this a while back in one of my class videos, but um, you take Ninja, for example, that class followed its name. It was you could ha have a very high dodge with it uh, while regening mana. And that was the whole point of the class. You dodge and hit, dodge and hit. It didn't do an incredible amount of damage, but it had that dodge factor, which is lives up to the name of the class. Now you have classes like Damian. This is my second approach where it is slightly more powerful than blaze binder, but what they've done is to nerf it. They've done something really simple and that's give it a really shit mana usage. So you run out of mana often with this class and that's not the way you should be nerfing a class. You should go directly for the skills. Um, but the, that's basically my two approaches these days. You, the classes that they come out with are generally the same, the same type of skills you have either on one class, a stack skill that buffs all the rest, or you have a multi-target, you have your nuke and you have your heal. It's basically the standard. Of course you have your art and everything, but they're pretty much the same skills with different wording for the description of them. So those two things need to change. But as far as nerfing a class goes, the ones that are widely used for PvP, soloing and farming, so you have Blazebinder for your farming, you have um, classes like uh, Cryomancer and stuff for PvP, um, and then you have for soloing, you know, Legion Doom Knight. Those are all following, if you play with those, they're all following their same skills, and those need to be changed, and they need to follow like their 
the class name needs to have the skills in them that match just like ninja like a consistent theme as opposed to just being really powerful i'm trying yeah, to find an example here but blaze binder i mean sure the art does match the the um the class name but it doesn't really live up to its name in terms of how you use it as a class how the attacks work and everything so the art lives up but everything else not really you can see them trying i guess with like a little bit with like the way on blaze binder it's you you're implying like a theme of fire and stuff and then mm. all of the abilities put dots on the enemy but it's still like it's i don't think it's enough they need to go more in depth with it and like animation. you don't get that and, feel from it like ninja that's yeah and nin ninja's that's a really good example yeah Along the same vein, um, Ziggs asks, "What top three classes need a major buff?" And I think I think this one should be a bit easier for for our answers mm. on this. There's there's a lot of classes that need to be buffed. Well, we need to find a top three, right? So which which class do you tend to use the most often in terms of like solo farming PvP all combined into one? Talking like what what class needs a buff that I use the most? Yeah, yeah. Well, I I only use Blazebinder and Void Highlord on those two. Like they need nerfs more than they do buffs. I don't know. I, th I just think the starter classes is an easy place to look for classes that need buffs. Yeah, the starter classes mm -hmm. are the first ones players get introduced to the game with, and they should be more competitive with current classes that are being released. Mm -hmm. They're old classes that. too, you know. I uh, hopped on yeah, an alternate account and finding classes besides, you know, um, Scarlet Sorceress, it's really hard, you know. And to progress in the story, it's made for low levels, but once you want to start playing these new events and you're not a high level and you have beginner classes, it's near impossible yeah like the recent event had a uh, three 6k hp monsters per room mm. to wreck a low level it's like what's what's the point of making making all this new content if, if all the new players can't even play it yeah very true we're yeah, generally forced to use blaze binder like i don't want to use blaze binder but it's the only class that will just get my farming done efficiently um and they definitely need to have a wider variety there so by nerfing blaze binder that'll force you to work on other classes that are already out in the game you don't have to make new classes buff those so players will start having a variety of classes to select from and you'll see a full room if you're farming a boss you'll see everyone will be using a different class besides you know one stone crusher and five blaze binders you know? uh if we're picking three classes that want buffed uh naval commander car clasher mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the one class from skyguard skyguard Gren grenadier i agree yeah, with you on naval grenadier. commander yeah, Naval those Commander, Card Clash are definitely those. Naval Commander, especially just because it's like an exclusive thing, and it it sort of fits with that with the theme of the Talk Like a Pirate Day stuff. And I think the the class dedicated to that should be a good class, not. Hey, maybe we'll get a buff this year. Yeah, maybe, maybe they're working on that because they are changing a lot of classes. Like Doom Knight got one recently, Necromancer, Necromancer, mm. stuff like that got buffs. So maybe we'll get one for this year. All their old classes too. Their seasonal ones like Prismatic Claw Suit. You know, those need buffs too. If, uh, if you're going to sell them every year, you know. Never good. No, I mean, if you're going to sell a class every year and you want players to buy it and use it, you know, those need a buff. But I definitely think Great Thief needs its own buff. Just for my ego. That's it. Oh yeah, every luck class <laughs> is going to need a buff after oh, yeah. you wreck them. Oh, God. All those PvP luck classes. RIP. Just looking through my fucking inventory at all the luck classes. Jesus. It's gonna be a shit show. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna suck for a lot of people that rely on their luck classes. I mean, I'm all wizard classes right now, but I do have a few I'm that use luck for PvP. They're all gonna be shoved in my bank, sadly. All right, the next question is coming from Ninja with a rocket launcher, and they asked, "With YouTubers like Alex leaving AKW because it's losing its flair, what keeps you hooked on the game?" I love the art style, the creativity with the certain like aspects of the game like how they write the stories some of that stuff like you won't find that in any other game the, the little humor and stuff they throw into everything and just the community hanging around that's a lot of fun all right community and story and the art styles art style as well seen art style is good i've never seen art style as good in a 2d game as this one i love it mm. what about you ray well to keep the answer relatively simple, playing this game since 2009, it updates every single week and it hasn't been that, they haven't let go of that weekly update. So that right there just shows that there's a lot of attention to AKW even nearly 10 years later. I think, what is it, the 8th anniversary this year? 9th. 
9th. So there we go. Almost 10 years this game's been out and they're still doing weekly updates. And if you're actively on Twitter, you see um, the interaction between the quote devs and players and more is very yeah, much more there. Yeah, with that. Uh, Elaine has been like actually taking player suggestions and stuff like mm. that even more and more now than we have seen before. Now, really cool. on the topic of YouTubers, the reason why it's so easy to reach out to this community is because it isn't a big one. But there is a lot of people in it, but it isn't a big community. And the people who are in within this AKW community are all interacting with each other. So, in a way, uh, doing AKW videos keeps... It doesn't keep the game going, it just keeps the community stimulated on those off days when the events aren't coming out. So... Um, what keeps me hooked on the game? Weekly updates, community, and on the days where there's nothing to do in AKW, I have, always have a reason to just hop on, record a video, find something to do, so it's a little bonus. For me, it's 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 pretty pretty different. I I actually, as much as I complain, have complained about the amount of classes in the game, I uh, I really just enjoy the whole aspect of looking at this at a class and seeing the similarities and differences between you know the other classes in the game and and in other MMORPGs. There just isn't the amount of classes that are within AQW. There's there's so many classes in AQW, and I think that that helps me to sort of like if I'm if I'm feeling bored one day with AQW or I want to make a video and I don't know what to make a video on, it's sort of just grab a class that you haven't look, I haven't looked at in a while see what it's like, go in depth with it, and it sort of just keeps me interested in the game and keeps me hooked on uh, on making the videos. Yeah, other games have like six classes in the whole game, and this game has hundreds, so yeah. it's definitely Well, that's another thing right there, variation. AQW, a lot of content to make videos on, you know. We've all um, we've all made videos on other games, you know, and there's solid yeah, proof on how that turned out. Can't be weekly up Pointing any fingers. But exactly, so you always have content in AQW, and that it's always fun to record an AQW video. I've never had that vibe from any other um, game. All right, our next question is coming from Zook. How long do you think AQW will last? Hmm. Well, if we look at their previous games, the original Adventure Quest is their longest running game. That's what, 11? No, wait, how many years old is that? Like, it's way more than 10, right? Yeah, it's gonna be. It's probably at least it, at least like twelve or something. Maybe it, okay. did it have its fifteen? I don't know. It's it's old. It's older than maybe some of the people playing it, and it's still going. It's still getting updates every week, right? So, look if they um if they continue down this path of charging you forty dollars for a pet, then it won't last very long. <laughs> okay, but. Um, what I predict is if there will be a transition between AQW to AQ3D, which I, I'm kind of hoping it will happen because that's where Artex Entertainment kind of wants to go. But um, look, if the weekly updates keep coming, you can keep the community on at a steady player base for a very long time. And there's always, I mean, these days advertising a Flash game like you used to do back in the day, you'd find it in, uh, I don't know, you'd be on a random site, you'd see it on the side, you'd click on it, play Adventure Quest Worlds. But if you do that today, people are like, oh, a Flash game, hell no. So once they port it over to like their application and everything and they do some advertising, then you know, you know, not only will it last, but you, you could grow AQW to an extent. So there's a lot of ifs and whens, but it's all up to Artix Entertainment and it's all up to the community to pressure them a little bit in a way so they do the right thing, you know. Like if they put it on Steam and you saw that game on Steam under free to play, you'd be like, Oh, I played that when I was younger. Like let's go back and see what's new. And yeah. maybe it's running at a solid frame rate. Right. A couple maybe hundred players actually enjoy it and stick around. Yeah, I'm I'm terrified player base. of when that happens because if they if they don't do like a lot more than just the server server rewrite to make the game better, then they're gonna release it on Steam and it's gonna be decimated by Steam reviews. Like imagine mm. a, just an average Steam player that's used to playing that's used to playing stuff like Warframe and other free to play games like that, like Dirty Bomb and all that, and they come across AQW. And even just in the set, in the state like that it's in right now in the severy right, it's still really, really lacking in a lot of ways. And so I think it would get a lot of negative reviews, and that that's gonna really kill any chance of it getting a big player base off of Steam. Well, you would be surprised to an extent, um, because AQ three D is uh, it's like any other game you can move around. It's a three D world. So people when they see AQ three D and they compare it to all the other three D games that they play. They're like, oh, what is this thing? You know, like I've played, I've seen um, MMORPGs before and MOBAs and everything, and the quality is much better. 
but you have games like I Am Setsuna, which is uh, like AKW. It also looks like League of Legends, you know, and because it's not a 3D game, I don't think the reviews will be that bad. But of course, there's so much work to do and there's going to be a lot of bugs if they try and port that over. So, yeah, they're going to have to really polish it up and make it a nice finished product before they put it up onto any store and it doesn't get like an AQ 3D thing where people see a very unfinished, very broken game going up on the free to play section and then giving it a negative review and never touching it again, right? Hmm. Hopefully, hopefully they learn from AQ 3D not to do that. Yeah, back on topic, if they're gonna, um, AQW will last if they just do the right decisions and it will last. Um, I'm not like gonna give a specific date, but it, it will last as long as they just keep at it. Yeah, I think they listen to the community enough now that they're, they're going to make some good decisions. Yeah, when the community is as old as it is, like, it's pretty hard to kill something like that off really fast, mm. right? It's going to be a slow death if it dies at all. <laughs> Cough. Yeah. $40. That will be a fast death if they go through with that. Our next question is coming from Sir Shadow, and they asked, What percent of AKW players do you think are botters? Well, you we have numbers, right? So when you see a server restart and you see the player count drop by a few hundred on every server i mean you could tally that up that's 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 actually an interesting way to look at it um so it's probably if you look at the numbers of just from server resets uh it's probably third around 30 mm. percent if not a little more a little less depending on the day what when what items are releasing and stuff like that but AKW yeah, has um, two communities, and they're very, very separate. The botter community and then the regular player community. I've been on channels who are pro botters. Like, they just advertise their new bots. Oh, this new bot has come out for this event. Um, I'm not going to say any names, but I look in the comments, I don't recognize anyone. And you don't ever see or hear from these players in your own comment section. Um, oh, I recognized a few. <laughs> well, I go on those bot videos, videos and I'm like, oh, I bet I attracted guy, a lot guy. of them for really kind of ticked off with my opinion on the bots but here's the problem um j judging from another game where they had this cracked account thing where they cracked their accounts without paying for the game th that was a huge player base um of those games like back in the day and Minecraft. there was yes yes um so they on some servers took away cracked accounts and they lost oh god like 40 percent of their player base AKW doesn't want to do that because that is still a precious amount of players so they're going to do things obviously to you know modify bots but they're never going to like body. ban they're never going to ban botters yeah that, um, that's that's a really in good bulk point. amount they're never going to do that I, i'm looking on youtube and I, and I see your video that you made on botters that that video you said where you shouldn't mm -hmm. use bots and it's like you'd think that's a popular opinion to have you know like botting is bad it seems no, it's generally not. like but not it's, it's really not it's really not yeah the dislike like to dislike ratio is it's almost mm. like 50 50 and it's really surprising to see such a such a, a polarizing like i guess group within the community that like there's this separate group of people that are into botting and the separate group of people that that strongly disagree with botting and i feel like a encourages it a little bit with the, some of their item requirements and stuff like that yeah. and such a simple yeah. game where there's not a lot of skill or action required to play the game along with uh, high requirements and high amounts of time required for certain items that people want in the game so they kind and of that's where the good excuse that comes in you know the botters say well look i'm not going to sit at my computer pressing buttons for eight hours i i, I want to go to work i want to go to school and when i come back i would have had 50 percent of the job done but you know botters will just abuse it like once you it's like a hack once you have a hack in a game you use it and you say to yourself i'm just gonna use it a little bit to get what i want then i'm gonna uninstall but once you've used it you start using it more and more um so botters once they've got a taste of it they'll just use it for every single farming thing like they won't like do percent of it and everything but um definitely using their whole like their whole entire farming abilities with bots it you know, it makes up like realistic players get a little bit ticked off and that's kind of the barrier between the two communities right there yeah it's definitely hostility i i just i seriously think that like if I don't think A would ever ban like all the botters, I think that they're gonna implement measures to prevent botting in the future, where they would make it not possible or something like that. But it's it's gonna be, it'd be a I think it would actually be like a genuinely bad decision mm. for them to even ban that all is the a botters. long shot. Yeah, yeah, it'd exactly. Be, it'd be very simple to implement anti-botting measures. Like you actually, just, yeah. if you see key repeats and then you uh, log someone out or move their player if they are doing repeated keys multiple times like the same keys 
over and over again at the exact same time intervals like there's, you have moderators for that too that can flag up on the server escape has yeah. something like that right where they'll see if someone's botting like they have auto detection and should copy that from runescape yeah i, th I think it's a it's it's a, i think it's an issue that's gonna be slowly but surely rectified with the server rewrite i don't think they're gonna just instantly go all the botters are gone yeah that would be that'd be problematic for them mm. All right, our next question is coming from I watch hentai for the plot real MVP and they asked if you could would you become a Minecraft let's play youtuber and quit AQW this is an easy one for me but I'll let you guys go first Corey uh, my first response is no because if I wanted to be a Minecraft youtuber I could have already done that um, second response is, isn't Minecraft dead yeah I was gonna actually say that. <laughs> there's like, two ways you can answer this the realistic way or the you know the funny way all right Realistically here though, realistically, b becoming a Minecraft YouTuber just like that would, it's kind of, it's, pr it's pretty difficult. I think there's still a big community These for days. Minecraft on YouTube, obviously, like, you know, I think there's still oh, there is a community, YouTubers. yeah. There's, there's still heaps of, of, uh, of, of those guys out there, but I think if there just was a way for me to, to have Minecraft as the game I made videos on over, over AQW, I would, I would consider that because... I'm gonna be honest, I have more fun playing Minecraft than I do p playing AQW. Like, AQW isn't a very fun game for me. I can't disagree with you. Yeah. I I mean, like, AQW, I don't really have that much fun playing AQW, whereas I do playing Minecraft. And so, like, if there was a way for that to just instantly happen, that there'd be no extra work involved or have to restart my channel or anything like that, and it would all be the same, I, I'd probably, co I'd consider, I'd at least consider that. And deviating for the question for one second, the reason why you find Minecraft more fun than AQW is because of the weekly updates they all every single week they have a boss needs to farm for items and as far as that con is concerned you just have a little bit more quests for the story and then you're done that's repetitive and boring there's so many ways i can spice that up but actually going back to the question realistically speaking minecraft is not a, what it was it's um smaller it's and it's harder to you know grow um your channel on it but just like aqw there is a community for it however there's a lot of people doing Minecraft videos, whereas AQW, there aren't a lot of people. So becoming a full-time Minecraft YouTuber, if you're consistent with quality, you will get there eventually, but it's, you know, I, w I would say no. I I've done it in the past. I'm not linking anything, but I have done it in the past and um, it's uh, it, it didn't work out because this community was too big, too many people doing it. So yeah, my answer is Minecraft, I like. I like playing has almost completely died when they did the new EULA, um, <sighs> which was the factions yeah. plug in for servers. I played a lot of that, like an like an ungodly amount of that, almost 12 hours a day. But um, the average amount of views for a video on Minecraft in the last upload in the last day is 59,000. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's what a 22,000 videos uploaded in the last day. So with an average view of 59,000. So. Mm. Yeah, it's oversaturated, and it would be really hard to break in this late in the game. If you were like CNNers, one of the first people uploading that, uh, it would be a lot easier. But CNNers, of course, moved away from that since then and on to other games. Uh, just like a lot of other You would get games. burnt out on it probably faster than you would any other game because it's just blocks you're staring at all the time. So, well, yeah. That's, that's actually a good point. I think I think you'd, you'd get burnt out in Minecraft at a at a quicker pace than you would on AQW. I, could, I, like, they, I think they oh, update. Yeah. They update mm. Minecraft a lot still, but like, not the same, not in the same sort of pace and mm. uh, regularity as, as AQW does. Yeah, and the only updates people... have been pretty game game breaking recently. From what I'm looking at, what gets views right now is uh, role playing. So you oh, get your friends together and you act and and um, tutorial videos and Minecraft mobile videos. Those are what are getting views in Minecraft right now. If I'm looking at the top results from the past 24 hours. So, not a, I'm not interested in any of that. I'm more of a hardcore, hardcore PvP kind of base builder. Yeah. If I was going to play Minecraft, but yeah, kind of a dead game, so. All right, our final question this week is coming from Mid Midohi. Oh God, I'm awful with pronunciation on like everything, but uh, they asked, Sounds about right. which mm -hmm. ones of the navels are you going to buy?
Oh. All right, so we have, uh, for people that are unaware, we have three confirmed navels. We have uh, the Paladin navel, the Obsidian Paladin navel, which are two different designs, and a Dragon navel with a bunch of recolors for that. Those are three confirmed with a fourth unconfirmed navel, uh, which people are assuming is on, on Bido's Twitter, if you want to look at that right now. So there's four navels that are kind of going to happen, uh, or three that are going to happen and one that's unconfirmed so far. And I'm going to get all of them, probably, because, you know, I hate money. <laughs> you want to go and answer, Renegade? Um, well, for me, it's easy. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm telling myself now that I'm not going to get the, the, the recolors, because that's just a, mm. ridic a ridiculous amount of ACs. Yeah, but it's got a rare pet and a rare, 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 it's all rare. Someone mentioned that there's a bank pet in there, and I don't think that's confirmed, yeah. but if there is... It's confirmed. It's oh, on the sign-up. Oh, no, system. you're kidding me. Isn't it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> if there's, if there's a bank I really am shedding a tear for your wallet, though, Renegade. Really if there's young. a bank pit in there, I'm getting it. That's that's basically uh, nine, what it comes down to. Nine armors, house items, damage oh, boost no. items, exclusive exclusive pirate waver and bank pet. No. <laughs> 10k, 10k AC. All right, well. Despite all of that, though, I'm not going to be getting any of the dragon uh, recolors or the dragon navels. Um, yeah, that purple one looks pretty nice. Even if it looks good, I'm, I'm not getting any of the drag. I don't even like how they look, to be honest. I'll be getting the Paladin the one. one. So, because I have a budget for ACs, um, but despite the budget, I'm definitely not going to buy any of the recolors. I've got the Paladin one, and I like the one on Bido's Twitter. I'll definitely get that one. It's, it reminds me of Skyguard. It makes a Skyguard, Skyguard oh, and that royalty, one. so. That's not the one. If you're looking at it, it's not, it's just an outline. There's, they haven't actually uh -huh. put out the art for the unreleased, the unconfirmed unreleased. Ah, uh, okay. Like see black outline. That, the other one's just, I think, like a, uh, like a art thing they just did for fun. I don't think that's an actual confirmed thing. But we don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, yeah, the one that Renegade just put in there, that's the one. Which, that one, if you look closely at it, it has like spikes coming off of it. It's like a weird thing coming out of the toe. It's very weird. That looks pretty I cool, don't, actually. I, I think that could be. I'm good. not a big fan of like spikes, random spikes protruding from stuff, but we'll have to wait till we actually see the art before I can make a judgment on that. But I'll probably get it anyway, just because it's another navel, and I mm. navels are probably my favorite armor to wear, and it's nice to have different variations of them to wear. I'm really upset though that there's no color custom version this year. You know, it would have been a perfect time instead of a recolor to add a color custom one, but you know. They think that would probably offend people or something. I, I don't know what, why they wouldn't do that, but I would have paid 5k, 10k for a color custom. But I guess I'm gonna have like 300 different recolors in my bank this year. <laughs> oh no, yeah. I I mean the re the recolor situation is. I mean, definitely that would be the best option. But I understand. I kind of understand why as well. Like one, obviously they want money, and you know, 10,000 yeah, AC is, is money. But uh, there's the other. There's another point of view that's like. If you look at the way that they're recoloring it, it's not just you couldn't get that same effect with a color custom armor. Like they're changing like the buckle color and like the like the, there's lots of different colors. Pretty much the entire entire armor, and almost every aspect has been reshaded. It'd be a little, it'd be yeah, it'd be slightly more simple, but it would ha it would have the same style and it would be the same like everything. But it, yeah, it, you can get there's little details like little animations, like the lightning animation on the blue one or the chaos eyeballs on the purple one that you wouldn't be able to get with a color custom version but i still think they should i like they're it, they should have the unique ones and then maybe add a i don't know i, re I really want a color custom one i don't know if you can tell I, yeah they should I, add I on the side really i would pay another i'd pay the 10k for all the variations and i'd also if like maybe you need the chest i'd also pay another 5k for a color custom one yeah so i could have my own color like even if they charge me 15k, like 10k for the chest, you buy that, you get all the variations, and if you have that chest, you can get, pay 5 more k, and you can get a color custom. I would do that just for a color custom enable, but yeah, they probably don't want to do that for whatever the reasons are. I think Elena said on Twitter that they weren't going to do a color custom alpha pirate, like the original naval design, because that would uh, make some of the older players unhappy. I had a few older players respond, like, tell like quote that and respond like tweet at me that they're like no nah, i'd be happy with that like that's cool but i guess there's a few that really don't want that well so yeah that's is that all the questions that's all the questions we've got this week all the questions thanks for coming on boys oh, cool. as always no problem. 
If you guys did enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, subscribe to Corey and Ray, I'll have both their links in the description down below, and if you want to leave any questions for future episodes in the series, then leave those in the comment section down below. Peace. Bye. Peace. <laughs>